Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja. And today I'll briefly answer a question about Frederick Jameson's 1986 essay, Third World Literature in the Era of Multinational Capitalism. This uh, Occasionally this essay comes up and people have their opinions about it. But someone had posed this question in the comments about what does he mean by national allegory in the essay. So before I go into it, I will highly recommend that uh, you should read uh, the Jameson essay from 1986. It was published in Social Text first, and then read Ajaz Ahmed's response to it, which is called uh, Jameson's Rhetoric of Otherness and something else. These are the two uh, essays that debate each other, and then Jameson has a brief response to Ajaz Ahmed. And in so many ways, I feel like he was misread by a lot of people. And I had uh, actually discussed it in my first book, I think, Constructing Pakistan. So let's just first unpack what he was trying to do in the essay. Okay, And I'm relying on my memory. I haven't read the essay recently, so uh, it could be a bit uh, flawed. But the basic thing that he was trying to explain in the essay was, and if you read it carefully, what he was saying is he was trying to answer one important question, and that was that why is it that most literature from the third world comes across as already read? Right? This is a direct quote from the essay. And what he means by it, it is that while most of the Western novelistic tradition and fiction, by and large, had moved into postmodernism, the novels coming from the third world were still mostly realistic fiction. So there is a period gap, right? And because of that, Jameson thought that when Western readers read it, they didn't read it carefully enough because they came across to them as outdated, outmoded, right? And that is what he's trying to remedy, right, through his essay, which kind of falls flat, but what he was trying to then suggest is that instead of expecting those novels coming from the developing world, which was then called the third world, instead of reading them as outdated because they are realistic fiction, we should read them as national allegories because those are the main struggles of the post-colonial nation states. So what does he mean by national allegories? So in opposition to, let's say, a novel set in New York, a novel set in California with their protagonists living their individual lives or whatever, what he is suggesting is that in the third world novel, the characters stand in for the nations or for the national struggles, right? They carry the story of their nations, even when the novel is high modernist, right? Like Salim Sinai from uh, Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children. That was his claim, right? Now, do keep in mind that by stating that, what he wasn't saying that the third world novel is outdated, right? What he was suggesting is that if the Western readers kept that in mind, they could read the third world novels more carefully and understand them. But there is one big mistake that he makes in his essay. And the mistake is he says, all third world novels are a national allegory. All, right? And that's where um, Ijaz Ahmed, of course, intervenes, right? And then Ijaz Ahmed goes and gives examples of the Urdu novelistic tradition and other, where we come across novels that just deal with individual stories or stories of a group and not necessarily a national allegory, right? Now, of course, Ijaz Ahmed is not privy to that tradition. I'm pretty sure he couldn't read Urdu novels or Hindi novels or Tamil novels, right? But the novelistic form carrying the burden of a nation 
in the realistic fiction, we see that somewhat. I mean, if you read Ngugi Chiango's novels, most of those novels are realistic novels, right? And uh, they do have a little bit of magic realism, for example, Devil on the Cross, but it is a novel of the nation. You read Rohintan Mystery's A Fine Balance, it is a novel of the nation. But the mistake that we shouldn't make is reading these characters as, as a stand-in for India, right? Because that would be a huge mistake. Now, we do that in Midnight's Children because Rushdie contrives the novel like that. From the very first page, our main character, Salim Sinai, right, says that he was born on the dot on 15th of August, 1947, right when India gets his independence. So the novel already invites us to read Salim Sinai's life as the life of India itself. That is allegorical, right? It's because the novel is contrived like that, it's written like that, right? And it announces that in a very postmodernist way. But not all novels do that, right? I mean, when we read, even in translation, the very generations, Abdullah Hussain's Udas Nasle, it's not necessarily about a national story. It's probably about the story of a community, right? And within that, the characters and what happens to them. If you read Kuratulan Heather's River of Fire, right, it's a novel set in India, but not necessarily a national allegory because it's trying to capture the lives of different characters. But, you know, here, uh, of course, uh, I haven't read the essay lately, but the question was about what does he mean by national allegory? So what he means by national allegory, Jameson, is that even when the stories are of an individual characters, they carry the burden of a national struggle or a national history or national identity. So hence, the private is mobilized in the service of the public to tell the story of a nation, which I think was, wasn't really like a very well-argued claim, right? And it comes as slightly imperialistic. But what I've always tried to highlight was that his intention was noble. What he was trying to explain was the the reason why so many third world novels, in terms of temporality, instead of being modern novels, tended to be realistic novels. And if you look at the American and British tradition, most of the time realism past 1940s, 50s, right? Realism kind of ends in even before that, actually. And then we are already, from 1920s onwards, we are into modernism. And modern, modernist way of writing, of course, if you want to take a look at it carefully, it is not an ipso facto representation of reality. It is highly contrived. You're in the minds of the characters. You see the world from the point of view of the characters. You don't see that in the realistic novel, because the realistic novel tries to just represent life as it is, right? So these are some of my thoughts about Jameson's essay. I think the essay and Ajaz Ahmed's response to it is uh, freely available now from social text. If I find the links, I'll post them in the description. But please read it carefully and then make up your mind about it. Um, for all the things that I record here, Right? These are just brief introductions. There is no way I can handle something exhaustively in such brief conversations. Where I do that, there you see, you know, five, six, seven part series like on Can the Subaltern Speak or Paulo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed. That's a different approach for videos because there I'm actually reading the text and talking about it. But this one is not necessarily a detailed discussion of Jameson's essay. It's just pointing out some of the things that I remember from my previous reading and more importantly, trying to explain what does he mean by third world literature being national allegories, right? 
that's it. I hope this answers the question and I hope it encourages you to read the essay more carefully and then form your own opinions. Uh, do share your ideas after you've read it and see how maybe if it is still useful to you. It's a slightly dated essay. That's all. I hope you're all doing well and taking care of each other. Please continue to do so and I will now see you next time. Until then, as always, peace and love.